inside home recording. Welcome to the first official episode of IHR TV. On today's episode, we're going to talk about Rewire. So what exactly is Rewire? Well, it's a software protocol that was jointly developed by Propellerhead and Steinberg Software. It allows remote control and data transfer among digital audio editing and related software. It's also an industry standard that runs on both Mac OS and Microsoft Windows audio applications. It enables a simultaneous transfer of up to 256 audio tracks and 4,080 channels of MIDI data. And best of all, it's free. So what I want to do now is show you how you can integrate Rewire with both Logic and Reason software. It's important to note that you need to launch Logic first and then Reason second. The audio will stream out of Reason and into the Logic mixer, and you'll be able to control the Reason software instruments from the Logic sequencer. So let's go ahead and launch Logic. Now the first thing we're going to do is create an empty project. And in that project, we're going to create an external MIDI track. That's the type of track we need to trigger the software instruments in Reason. You'll notice on the right hand side we have a Reason section, and if we click on that, over here we'd normally see our Reason devices. So let's go ahead and launch Reason. Okay, so here we have our blank Reason rack. Now one of the first things you're going to need to do is go to your Reason Preferences, select your General tab, and switch it to Keyboards and Control Surfaces. You want to make sure that Use with Reason is not checked. And the reason for this, excuse the pun, is that you don't want to double trigger any of the software instruments from both Logic and Reason. If that happens, you'll end up with this unpleasant sort of flangey sound. Okay, so let's go ahead and close this window. And let's flip back over to Logic. Now the second thing we need to do is go down to our mixer and create an auxiliary input. This auxiliary input will allow us to hear what's coming out of Reason's stereo outputs. Create new auxiliary channel strips will allow us to create that stereo channel. We'll choose stereo. We'll set the input to Reason's left and right outputs and we'll leave output one and two as they are. Okay. Now if we switch back to Reason, we can go create a mixer and plug in all our devices into it. I'm going to hide the sequencer since we won't be using that. And for now, I'm just going to create a subtractor analog synthesizer. When we switch back to Logic, you'll notice in our Reason section, we can now select it here. Now the last thing we need to set up is in our preferences. In the audio preferences, there are two choices on how we want Reason to behave. We can set it to live mode or playback mode. If you have a faster CPU and you plan on triggering Reason devices, switch that to live mode so that there'll be the least amount of latency when you play your keyboard. Speaking of which, let's go ahead and try that now. Okay, so I'm now triggering the Reason device. Once again, the audio from Reason is showing up in Auxiliary 1. Be sure to check out InsideHomeRecording.com for a lot more useful information about Rewire and a whole bunch of other really cool topics. And if you haven't listened to our Enhanced Audio podcast, do a search for Inside Home Recording the next time you're in iTunes. So until next time, I'm Paul Garay. Happy recording. Hey there, this is Martin Sitter from MacProVideo.com. I'm piping in here to let you know that MacProVideo.com is sponsoring IHRTV. In fact, we've got a great coupon code that you can get from Paul and Derek and our other friends at IHRTV that will save you up to 15% off MacProVideo.com tutorials. 
and that includes Paul Garay's great GarageBand, Reason, and Pro Tools tutorials. So come on by and check us out.